it doesn't really matter what day of the week it is. Every morning starts the same. And that's coffee first. Then watering. It's not so much the ground that needs watering this time of year, but anything in a pot and the containers and stuff, they have to have water because those things are all roots. Odin, come on. Up, up, up. Come on, bud. It's time to go inside. Come on. Up. Good boy. Come on. Come on. In we go. All week long, it has been like 60 degrees, which is really cold for here. So that kind of put the put the fire under me to get some fall containers going. It's always hard to decide when to make that transition because the summer stuff is actually still looking really good. Um, but you just know it falls apart quickly. And if you wait too long, then it almost seems like there's no point in even bothering with the fall stuff. So today we're doing some fall containers. So the thing with fall containers is that I get a little cheap with them because let's be honest, we're not gonna be looking at them for that long. So I don't really wanna spend hundreds of dollars on a container, which I have no problem doing for a summer container because it's the basically the feature of my garden for four months maybe. So uh, I'm going to be reusing some plants and we are off to the cottage to go uh, dig up some plants from those containers that I showed you in the pool makeover because no one's going in the pool anymore so I might as well use some of those plants. It's a really beautiful day so I'm just gonna pop down to the beach really quick there's a little bit of beach finally uh, and just see if there's any beach glass or driftwood that I need well I found a piece of driftwood and now I'm trying to haul it back this is what I do mr. much more patient hates going on walks with me I haven't been for a walk on the beach all summer and the summer before that and the summer before that because we haven't had a beach because the water's been so high, but it's finally starting to come down a little bit. And uh, it was just really, really nice. I'm a little out of breath now. Anyway, so I was walking on the beach and all of a sudden I look up and there is a bald eagle with a big stick, which I assume was for its nest. Well, here's my driftwood. It's riding shotgun with me all the way through the back. Uh, you just gotta fit in however you can. Um, there was more driftwood that I found that was pretty good. I just have to go back a different day maybe with some help and a bigger vehicle. Well, that trip was great. I'm home now. Uh, it took a little longer than I thought it was going to, but well worth it. But before I can do anything else, I have to move on to my second stage of coffee because my life is sort of sponsored by coffee, much like this video is sponsored by Cometeer Coffee. So I drink a fair amount of coffee every day and I usually start with a few cups of hot coffee in the morning like I had before we left. And then I move on to iced coffee later in the day, particularly when I'm thirsty. Is it weird that I drink coffee because I find it really refreshing when it's iced? Anyway, let me show you how I'm making my iced coffee now. Six to eight ounces of water. And then here's the brilliant part of this. We go into the fridge and we grab one of these guys. I keep a few of them in the fridge thought out. So this is flash frozen coffee and Cometeer makes this in these great little recyclable aluminum capsules and they have a monthly service. You order what you like. They have all sorts of flavors. Today I'm drinking their morning blend, which is kind of like a uh, medium blend, which I've sort of moved on to by this time of the morning, but I, I like some of their dark ones as well. And this has been melting in the fridge. Like I said, I just keep them in the fridge so they're ready to go when I need them. So in addition to the fact that this just tastes really good, there's a couple of things I really like about these capsules. So the first is just convenience. 
it's a really simple way for a single serving of coffee rather than having to make like a whole pot or if you want an iced coffee, it takes just a couple of seconds to make that. The second thing is that I'm really loving these for on the go. So I've been taking these with me to work. We have hot water at work. So if I want a cup of coffee, I can just bring my capsule and make my own cup of coffee at work instead of spending three and a half dollars at the coffee shop down the street. So if you want to give this a try, Cometeer has a great deal. For a limited time, you're going to get $20 off each of your first two orders with the code that I have below in the description. So check for that. All right. So now that I'm quenched my thirst and I'm fueled up, let's get back to making some pots. Okay. So I've cleaned out the whole box behind me. This box actually was a great success this year with one exception, the chipmunks. They kept just sitting there waiting for all, I think the strawberries would have done really well, except every time one got perfectly red, they just ate it. Same thing with the tomatoes. They really were a problem, but I do have all this basil left. That's still great from here. So I'm gonna go quick. Pepper just fell out. There were also some peppers left that uh, didn't color up, but they'll be fine anyway. I'm gonna go stick this in water because I will make some pesto with this. So I still have um, drip running into this pot and I'll leave that in here and leave it on for the time being. But we're going to start with, I picked two. Oh, wow. Actually, I'm going to turn this off. It's really, really wet in here. I'm going to start with two of our grasses that we've saved. use all the same soil in here. Remember, these plants are not in here for long. I don't actually expect them to really grow. Um, they're just gonna sort of live. You guys know that I'm anti-mum. It's a personal choice. Well, I have to say this one hurts to take apart because it still looks so good. I love it so much, but the bird of paradise that's in the center of it, if I'm going to bring it in, like I got to do that now. So I'm going to carefully disassemble this one uh, because I'm going to save the bird of paradise to bring in. And this uh, euphorbia here, this is Ascot Rainbow, is like questionably hardy here. So I'm going to dig it out and plant it in a protected spot of the garden and hope that it comes back for next year because I would like to use this in containers for, for all time because it's so great. And the purple heart just breaks apart when you touch it. So I think I'm just going to break it apart first because otherwise there's just going to be pieces all over the place. By the way, this root's really easy too. So if you're inclined to be bringing things in, you could, you know, bring in cuttings of your purple heart and grow those out and then make more cuttings in winter. It's a great way to save plants. I just, you gotta pick and choose what you bring in. I just can't bring it all in. And the clematis is climbing up this, so I'm going to have to kind of peel that off.
so I went to go get some gloves because about halfway through digging those out, I remembered that euphorbia sap can be can burn your skin really bad. And the one thing they always say is like, never touch your eyes. And then I flung a bunch of dirt in my face and I'm like, don't touch your eyes. I've got some gloves on now. So this is, these are just beautiful. And I got to figure out, I was going to put these in where the tall dahlias are, but those are still looking good too. So I still have to find like a really nice protected spot to replant these into. Well, I wasn't planning on having to fill this up with soil, but um, most of it came out on the root ball of the bird of paradise. Okay, I took two of the big grasses from the pool and I'm gonna just stick them right next to each other to make one big grass here. All right, I am gonna tie those two together. So I think I've talked before about my frustration with the fall offerings in our local garden centers. It's basically mums. And you guys know I'm, I just don't care for mums. It's not my thing. And so if you don't want mums, it's very hard to find things. Um, in fact, the large kale that went in the trough planter, I picked up in Illinois. And this size kale, which is beautiful, um, was all I could find. And I picked those up at a big box store. I would have liked something much bigger here um, because again, these won't grow that much. And then of course, what do you fill in with? Well here, I'm just going to use a whole bunch of pumpkins and not just pumpkins, also squash. I mean, there's a spaghetti squash in there. There's a carnival squash in there. I mean, some of these are edible squash. So I just picked those up at the grocery store because they're really cheap this time of year. Will the chipmunks eat them? Probably. They'll probably eat the pumpkins too eventually. So it'll be fine. But Anyway, I always feel a need to get a little creative, um, especially if I'm trying to do this um, on the cheap. So that's two fall planters down. I have one more planned because at some point we got to move that big banana. Uh, that will be a video all on itself uh, and it's not happening yet, but very soon. Uh, and then we'll do some fall stuff in that one. But I thought you'd like to see these two and I'm going to continue with that one, uh, trying to reuse things from the garden or buy things on the cheap. Uh, because again, it's just not containers that I'm interested in investing a lot of money in. Um, but I do want them to look good and I want them to have something here. And right now they get honestly a little lost in the garden because there's so much color still in the garden, but very soon that's going to change and I'll be happy I had these. All right, that's two containers down. Catch you in the next one. So here's the driftwood that I dragged home. I'll tuck it in probably a little bit more so it doesn't like hang overhang the driveway like that. But so the idea here is that sometimes if we get really bad floods, the water comes flowing down the driveway and then cuts through here and creates essentially a giant trench through the middle of this garden. So the idea is not to stop the water, it's just to sort of slow it down so it doesn't have quite a direct, as direct of a flow. Um, so I'll probably need a little bit more along here. And maybe I'll even continue it along the paths, we'll see.